Good evening, everyone. This is Scotty Sanders coming to you live by Facebook. I hope you're able to check it out tonight. Please let me know if you've joined. I'd love to know that you've uh, jumped on. Uh, the topic tonight I'll be talking about this. If you're a parent, I want to encourage you to listen to this to the end, and you may want to consider sharing this with some others. So, um, I'll be talking to you about the five, four, one rules for parents. Now, these rules deal with the family in general, and, and it's really, I can't speak to kids, I can speak to parents, but it, applied, it applies to the kids, it applies to the parents, but it also applies to the family unit. So, uh, I hope it's some good takeaways for you. I think it's gonna be some real practical things. You know, school's getting back in the swing of things. I know this is a big week for a lot of people. School starts back. It's kind of that time where you can have a little bit of a fresh start, actually. You can say, you know, maybe we messed up last year, but let's get off to a good start. And what I've found through the years is do things that are sustainable and you can be consistent. Because when you're inconsistent, you lose a little credibility with your kids. When you say, we're going to do this, and then two months later, they it's like, what was that all about? So find something you can be consistent and you can do along the way. All right? So uh, I'll talk about these five, four, one rules. Before we get there, I'm going to ask my daughter, Jenny. She was with me last Thursday, and we were at the Salem Communications. I happened to do several uh, radio interviews, and uh, she's going to post for you the times. If you'd like to check that out, the different times that you could listen to me, some of those were pre-programmed or pre-recorded, I guess. I did actually one live show and a couple pre-recorded that will play several times during this week. So if you'd like to check that out, I talked a little bit about Quest of the Keys and what we're doing in schools to empower the next generation to discover their purpose, unlock their potential, and live with passion. You'll get to really hear, you know, some some of the interesting uh, side, you know, stories behind how Quest got started, how the main character name came up. Uh, so I think you'll find it kind of interesting, but also share some good leadership nuggets along the way. So my daughter, Jenny, will post that schedule. If you'd like to check that out, you can also go to the Quest of the Keys Facebook page, and we've got some of those interviews or portions of those interviews posted there because we actually videoed me in studio and doing some different things. So you may want to check that out. All right, if you're ready to dive in again, my name is Scotty Sanders. I'm honored to be with you. Thank you for coming. It's always a blessing to me and encourages me. You know, I get to do a, a lot of leadership development. I get to uh, encourage leaders and develop leaders, not only here in the United States, but with leaders all over the world. It's something I'm deeply passionate about because see, my purpose is to encourage and to empower others to live, lead, and finish well. Let me say it again, to live, lead, and finish well. And that first part, live, the place that you live the most at is your home. And I believe it's important that you lead well at your home. Because when you can influence and impact your kids, it can affect things for a generation, all right? Now, both of my kids are grown now, and so they can verify, you know, some of the things I'll share with you, we didn't have to deal with then, but if we did, I would definitely practice this, and I practice some of these things even with my grandkids, different type relationship, but still things I think that shows a level of respect. So let's talk about these five, four, one rules for parents. So let's talk about, for the first part of that, are the five rules for kids. So this is what, as a parent, I wanna encourage you to enforce the, not enforce in a bad way, but reinforce these concepts, these rules to your kids. And here's the first one. And this is real simple. In fact, I was asking one of my granddaughters last week, she, had have, she was actually home sick, and so I was staying with her where her mom was out having to run some errands and stuff. And so I was just there, and so we were just having some conversations. I just asked her a question about you know, are you excited about school? And she said, well, I am. Well, what are you excited about? I'm excited about seeing my friends and, and excited about recess and excited about, you know, everything but learning. And I just said, uh, well, I won't say which one because I don't want to embarrass any of them later on if they watch this. But I just asked her, just what do you think the purpose behind school is? And, and she gave me every answer but learning. I know she knows that. But I emphasize, so here's the first one. Make sure you remind your children the purpose of school is learning, and that should be the priority. 
The other things are really ancillary, okay? Again, certainly building relationships, so, so forth, but you can do that in a lot of other environments, but learning is very important. So you wanna emphasize the purpose of school for your kids is learning, that they understand it. Now listen, this is not a knock on my mom and dad. I don't mean, mean that. But to a certain extent, I thought school a little bit was, you know, first, it was a great time for recess and playing ball, playing sports. You know, school was, the learning part was somewhat secondary for me and my grades suffered for that. When I got to be a teenager, school was more about girls for me to a certain extent and my friends. And so it was really later on in my high school years and definitely when I got in college and worked on my master's, I realized this is all about learning, getting smarter, that I can make a difference in the world. So that's the first one. Second, teach them to respect authority at home and at school, all right? You know, if a teacher or principal would call me about one of my kids, and let me just say, they never called me about my daughter, just for the record, so you can figure that out. But when they did, I would always be on the side of the authority. And I'd basically say, you've got permission for me to do whatever you need to to my child. If they need a paddling, paddle them. If they need to be suspended, you do what you need to do. But I wanted my child to respect authority, not only at home, but when they left home, at school. The third one, limit social media and technology. Limit social media and technology. Literally, kids can spend, when they get home, most of the rest of the day doing nothing but that. So you need to put some limits, and I would say as a rule, we had a rule in my home when I was growing up. Again, we didn't have technology where we could look at our phone or an iPad or a laptop, but we had a rule that you did not watch television when we had our meals together. That was just a no-no. When Cindy and I and go out and have lunch or meal together, I don't have my phone that I'm looking at things. Unless I get permission from her, I'll say, babe, I really need to catch this call or I need to respond to this text quickly. But I try to really limit that and make sure that I focus my attention on her and not the other things. Now, sometimes because I'm going from meeting to meeting and I'll squeeze in lunch, sometimes I have to do that, but that's not the norm. So limit technology and social media. And you should consider a rule as it relates to social media or related to technology, that that's only practice in living areas. And what I mean by that, don't let your kids, especially when they're younger, off doing that in a room by themselves. It's too many things that can get into their minds that you need to protect them from that. Now, as they get older, you wanna give them a little bit more privacy. However, they've gotta earn trust that you can allow them to have that privacy as well, okay? So limit technology, make it a practice outside of the living area. In other words, it's where the family hangs out. It's not in your bedroom, it's not in your playroom, it's where everybody usually hangs out, watches television, or we talk and hang out. All right, so that's number four. Number five, Chores and homework teaches responsibility. That's, that's a great teaching tool. You know, when you get home, first thing, have you done your homework? You don't get to go do other things till you've done your homework. And a Saturday, you don't get to go play and do other things or watch television until you've done your chores. It teaches responsibility. Listen, if they don't learn responsibility at an early age, it's going to cost them big time, big time, as they get older. And you have a responsibility as a parent to teach them responsibility. All right, so those are the five rules for kids that the parents have a responsibility to teach their kids. Simple things, definitely doable, but you've got to enforce that. And you've got to make it where this is how we do things. So I want to strongly encourage you to practice that. Now, four rules for parents. So as it relates to the family, these are things as a parent I want to speak into you for just a moment, okay? So the first one is this, set a good example. You know, it's really hard to reinforce your kid's language when they hear you using bad language. It just doesn't work that way. So your language is, is an example. Showing kindness. It's hard for you to teach your kids to be, uh, and listen, I must have skipped one of these. Okay, I think I did skip number three. Let me back up a second, sorry about that. So number three, so go back, sorry about that. If you're taking notes, number three is, number three is encourage your kids to be kind to everyone. And that, it seemed like I was going through that pretty quick. Encourage your kids to be kind to everyone, okay? And, and encourage people, encourage them to make friends and be kind with people, all right? 
make that just something you reinforce to your kids of, are you doing that? Are you being kind to people? Are you making friends? Okay, so there you go. So one, remind your children the purpose of school. Number two, teach them respect, not only at home, but also at school. Encourage your kids to be kind to others and also to make friends. Number four, limit social media and technology. And number five, chores and homework teaches responsibility. All right, now to the parents now, the four rules. First one I said, set a good example. Again, ex such as your language is a way you set a good example. Showing kindness to others. It's hard to teach your kids to be kind when they don't see kindness from their mom and dad. Truthfulness, your word is your bond. You know, if you tell white lies and you're not always honest and you catch your kids in a lie, how do you, how do you, how do you settle that? I mean, that's incongruent with them. They can always point to, and they may not argue with you, but listen, they're going, they're, that's going to be an, a credibility integrity thing. Can I trust my mom and dad? They want me to do things they're not willing to do. And then certain habits. I won't get into those, but what are habits you don't want your kids doing that you're practicing? You know, there are certain habits that I never did that I never had to explain to my kids why I'm doing it. And they, they shouldn't do it. And here's another one. No technology at meals at family time. So when you're at the table, if you're saying they can have technology, you need to practice that as well. If you're telling the kids, I'm sorry, you can't bring your game, you can't bring your iPad, your phone, but there you are fooling with your phone or your iPad, that's a problem. So again, uh, you're setting a good example by those. Here's a second one, rule for a parent. Ask kids questions daily about their day and be specific, all right? And don't ask interrogating type questions ask positive questions like what's your favorite class tell me a little bit about that what makes it your favorite class who did you talk to at school today things like that so ask them specific things about their day okay and make them positive things number three all right this is going to challenge you a little bit but i promise you it's doable have at least three family dinner nights at least three family dinner nights. You can do four or five, but you ought to do at least three that you focus, we all have a meal together, even if you have to pick up a meal, fine, it doesn't matter about who cooks the food or you pick up the food. The point is you want it to be where it's where you can have just food and good conversation. No technology, no looking at anything else, you're just building a relationship with your family. You're focused on each other. You're encouraging one another. You're having, you're building that relationship. You're having a conversation. You're getting to know what's going on in your kid's life. Man, that's great discipleship really for your kids to do that. I disciple my kids around the dinner table many times. You know, if they've got a question about something, they have a difficulty, that's a, that's a, a vulnerable place where they can share those things because they know the family there we support each other, we encourage each other. All right, so that's gonna be a hard one, but it's doable. Here's the next one. It's not gonna be easy to do, but it's something you absolutely should practice. And it's this, mom and dad have a date night every week. Not every month, not once a year, every week. Now, if you have young kids, that can be a real challenge. In fact, Cindy and I, probably when our kids were real young, when Jenny and Jake were young, we didn't go out to see a movie and get a babysitter a lot. We did that occasionally, but we could still have a date night by having you know, our, some alone time, watching a movie together, watching television together, sitting on the back porch. There's other ways that you can do it. The main thing is, mom and dad, you need to connect together. Either get a babysitter and go out and connect, or after the kids go to sleep, you have an hour, two, three, where you spend some time together. And it's your date night. My wife and I have been married for 39 years and we still date every week. In fact, we date multiple times. I guard my time that I can spend with her. It's a priority, you invest in that relationship. But when you do that, your kids see that, they understand the importance of their mom and dad being in love and having a strong relationship, it gives them a level of comfort and confidence and security. It's one of the best parenting things you can do 
is for the dad to love the mom and the mom to love the dad and the mom and dad to s spend time with each other. All right, so we covered the five rules for the kids that the parents need to encourage the kids to do, the four rules that the parents need to do. Now, let me give you one key rule that you need to do for the family, and it's this. Parent, nurture, and protect the relationships the relationship with your kids. Be careful about the things that you say and the things that you do. You want to always err on the side of how does this nurture the relationship? How does this protect the relationship? Because listen, if you mess up that relationship, it's hard to get it back and you start seeing kids rebel against the parents sometimes. And sometimes kids rebel no matter what you do, but you don't want to lead them down that path that basically all communication's been cut off because they don't listen to you anymore because maybe you're toned or you're hard with them. And listen, I've got to watch that. When my kids were growing up, I had to watch that. And I had to apologize to my kids quite a few times because I could be that way. But the main thing I've learned through the years, guard that relationship with your kids. Nurture it and protect it. And you do that. Keep communi communication going. Don't let no communication to go over a day, you know, you may be upset with each other, but every day you need to talk. You need to have meaningful conversation, even if you're mad at each other. Even if you're disappointed in your child or they're mad at you at a parent because you grounded them or something, you still need to have meaningful conversation. And here's another thing. Be the parent now and become their good friend later. Very important you get that. Don't worry about being their best bud now because if you're their best buddy, let me tell you, when, when, when you get to be a teenager, I can think about my best buddies when I was a teenager. The last thing I needed to do or wanted to have happen is my parents to be like that because a lot of my buddies didn't lead me down the best path. I don't need my parents to lead me astray doing things I shouldn't be doing, dumb things, stupid things, reckless things. Be the parent now and that'll give you the opportunity to be their friend later on in life. All right, so that's my kickoff back to school, the five, four, one rules for parents. Five things that you need to talk to your kids about, four things you need to practice, and one that's the linchpin, the foundation of being a good parent is the relationship that you want to nurture and protect. Now listen, maybe you heard something tonight that spoke to you. I'd encourage you Repost that as the best takeaway or the best quote of the night. And if this has helped you, I want to ask you to please hit the share button and pass this on to some others. I really believe if you'll start this school year and you'll practice these things, I think you'll have the best school year you've had in a long time. Be that parent. Lead well at home. That's what this Facebook Live is all about, leading well. You lead yourself well. You lead your children well. And it will be a blessing for your family if you do that. Well, listen, my friends, I hope you have a great week. Hope it's a great back to school. And I'll be leading well to next time. I hope you will too. Take care.